Medieval Kannada literature covered a wide range of subjects and genres which can broadly be classified under the Jain, Virashaiva, Vaishnava and secular traditions. These include writings from the 7th century rise of the Badami Chalukya Empire to the 16th century, coinciding with the decline of Vijayanagara Empire. The earliest known literary works until about the 12th century CE were mostly authored by the Jainas along with a few works by Virashaivas and Brahmins and hence this period is called the Age of Jain Literature. The 13th century CE, to the 15th century CE, saw the emergence of numerous Virashaiva and Brahminical writers with a proportional decline in Jain literary works. Thereafter, Virashaiva and Brahmin writers have dominated the Kannada literary tradition. Some of the earliest meters used by Jain writers prior to 9th century include the Chitana, Badande, and the Melvadu meters, writings in which have not been discovered but are known from references made to them in later centuries. Popular meters from the 9th century onwards when Kannada literature is available are the Shampu Kavyas or just Shampu, Vachana Sangatya, Shatpadi, Rigali, Tripadi, and Kavya. The Jain scholars wrote mostly about the life of Tirthankars Jain saints and about princes and persons who attained sainthood. These writings are called Jain Puranas. Virashaiva works centered on the Hindu god Shiva, his various forms and his saintly devotees. A unique and native form of poetry called Vachana Sahitya was born in the 12th century CE, as a reaction to the rigid social customs prevailing at that time. This form of poetry in pithy prose was heralded by the Virashaiva saints and remains popular even today. Brahmanical writings were on the Vaishnava Hindu epics, the Ramayana, the Mahabharata, the Bhagavata, the Puranas and subjects bearing on the Vedas. Another devotional movement, inspired by the teachings of Madhvakarya heralded by Vaishnava saints ushered in a form of Kannada literature called the Haridasa Sahitya literature of slaves of God in the 14th century CE, and resulted in the production of a vast corpus of devotional compositions over the next four centuries. A vast amount of literature came to be written on non-religious subjects generally classified as secular literature. Secular literatures were on such subjects as grammar sabdagama, logic yuktyagama, philosophy paramagama, poetry, romance, drama, rhetoric, prosody, lexicon, biography, history, medicine, veterinary science, mathematics, poetic inscriptions called kavya, cookery, fiction, astrology, meteorology, toxicology, eroticism etc. Early literature The verse form of inscriptions were popular in the 7th century and the Shravanabelagola inscription of Nandisena 7th century, and the Kap Arabata record of 700 in Tripadi meter is considered the earliest available lithic records of Kannada poetry. The Karnateshwara Katha, which was quoted later by Jayakirti, must have belonged to the period and was a eulogy of Palakeshin II. Other Kannada writers of this time whose works are considered extinct are Siyamakundacharya who wrote Prabhrita and Shravaradadeva, also called Tumabaloracharya who wrote the Chudamani Crest Jewel, a 96,000 verse commentary on logic Tattvartha Mahashastra. Other sources date the Chudamani to the 6th century or earlier. Bhattakalanka, a 17th-century Kannada grammarian, wrote of the Chudamini being a milestone which demonstrated that Kannada was well suited for scientific works. Gajashtaka, a rare work on elephant management was written by the Western Ganga king Shivamara II around 800 but is now considered extinct. Around 900, Gunavarma I authored the Shudraka and Harivamsha. His writings are considered extinct but references to these writings are found in later years. He is known to have been patronized by King Araganga Nidamarga II. In Shudraka, he has favorably compared his patron to King Shudraka of ancient times. Sri Vijaya, court poet of Rashtrakuta King Amogavarsha I wrote Chandraprabha Purana in the early 9th century. A prosody called Guna Gankyam has been referenced in a Tamil work called Yaparangalakarigai by Amritasagara and has been dated to the middle of the 9th century. Kavirajamarga, 850, written by King Amogavarsha I and Sri Vijaya, is the earliest available book on rhetoric and poetics, though it is evident from the book that several works and meters of Kannada literature and poetry had existed in previous centuries. Kavirajamarga is a guide to poets that aims to standardize these various styles. The book refers to early Kannada writers such as the 6th century Western Ganga dynasty King Durvinita, a writer of prose. 
Hence it is proposed that a considerable volume of prose and poetry must have come into existence prior to 850. Other writers mentioned in Kavirajamarga are Vimala, Udaya, Nagarjuna, Jayabandhu for Kannada prose and Ravikirti 636, Kavisvara, Pandita, Chandra and Lokapala in Kannada poetry. <laughs> Jain literature The Jain age of literature in Kannada has been called as the Augustan age of Kannada literature with writings of nearly 200 authors considered important. Jain authors in Kannada are far more than in Tamil or Telugu languages. Kannada is the only language in which a Jain version of Ramayana and Mahabharata exists, in addition to Brahmanical version of the same epics. Famous among Jain writers were Atakavi Pampa, Sri Pana, Chabundaraya, Rana, Gunavarma I, Nagashandra, Nyasena, Nagavarma I, Agala, Jana etc. Adhikavi Pampa, widely regarded as one of the greatest Kannada writers, became famous for his Purana, Adapurana 941. Written in Shampu style, it is the life history of the first Jain Thirtankar Rishabhadeva. Pampa's other notable work was Vikramarjuna Vijaya 941, is a Jain version of the Hindu epic, Mahabharata, with Arjuna as the hero. Also called Pampa Bharata, it praises the writer's patron, King Shalukya Arakesari of Vemulavada a Rashtrakuta feudatory, comparing the king's virtues favorably to those of Arjuna. Pampa demonstrates such a command of classical Kannada that scholars over the centuries have written many interpretations of his work. Pampa's contemporary was Sri Pana, the court poet of Rashtrakuta King Krishna III. He received the title Kavi Chakravarti poet laureate and Ubhaya Chakravarti imperial poet in two languages, for his command over Sanskrit as well from his patron. He became famous for his Santapurana written around 950, narrating the life history of the 16th Tirthankar Santinatha. Other classics by Sri Pana are Jinaksharamail, a poem in praise of Jainas and Bhuvanai Karamabudaya, the later considered extinct but known from citations in later works. Rana was the court poet of Western Chalukya kings Tailapa II and Satishraya. He along with Pampa and Sri Pana are called the three gems of Kannada literature. Rana wrote a Hitapurana in 993, a shampoo writing in twelve chapters on the life of the second Tirthankar. His other classics are Sahasabhimavijaya or Gadayuda written in 982, a shampoo writing in ten chapters which narrates the story of the epic Mahabharata with particular reference to the duel with clubs between Pandava Bhima and Kaurava Duryodhana. In this writing, the poet favorably compares his partner King Satishraya to Sahasabhima daring Bhima. Earlier to this, Rana was patronized by Western Ganga minister Chavandaraya when he wrote Parashurama Karita, in which he compares his patron to Parashurama. In 1105, Nagachandra, a poet and builder in the court of Hoysala Veera Balala I who was responsible for the consecration of important Jain temples Jainalaya, wrote the Jain version of Ramayana called Ramachandra Charitapurana. The story which deviates from the Valmiki Ramayana narrates the legend of Rama in a shampoo of 16 sections. In this work, Rama becomes a Jain ascetic and attains nirvana at the end. A compliment to Pampa Bharata by Adhikavi Pampa, the effort earned Nagachandra the title Abhinava Pampa. The earliest available prose in Kannada is Vidaradhan by Shivakoshacharya. The title means, Worship of Elders. The writing contains 19 stories mostly borrowed from the Sanskrit book Brihakatha Kosha and is about Jain tenets. The writing describes issues such as rebirth, karma, plight of humans on earth, social issues of the time such as education, trade and commerce, magic, superstitions and condition of women in society. Jana who was given the title Kavichakravarti poet laureate in the court of Hoysala Veera Balala II was also a minister, builder of many Jain temples and came from a family of such famous writers of the Hoysala court as Sumanobana and Malakarjuna. His Yasodhara Karita and Ananthanathapurana are considered to be enduring classics. The former work narrates the story of a king who was about to sacrifice two boys to a local deity called Mariyama. On hearing their story, the king releases the boys and gives up the practice of sacrificing live victims. In the early 13th century, Andeya wrote the Madana Vijaya, also known as Kavana Jela, Victory of Kama or Kabagara Kava, Poet's Defender or Sobagina Suji, Harvest of Beauty. 
In this unique work, Andeya used only indigenous Kannada words desia and naturalized Sanskrit words tatbhava totally avoiding assimilated Sanskrit words tatsamas. In the story, Shiva imprisons the moon and Cupid kama in his anger assails Shiva with his arrows. An angry Shiva curses Cupid to be separated from his bride, when Cupid contrives to free himself of the curse. <laughs> Virashaiva literature Among early Shaiva writers Durgasimha who wrote Panchatantra in 1025. He was a minister in the court of western Chalukya king Jayasimha II. Here he mentions many of his predecessors and contemporaries. Harihara, also known as Harisvara, was patronized by Hoysala king Narasimha I and wrote the Garijakalyana in the old Shampu style describing the marriage of Shiva and Parvati in ten sections. He came from a family of accountants from Halebidu and spent many years in Hampi writing more than 100 ragales poems in, blank verse in praise of Virapaksha a form of Shiva. Raghavanka was the first to introduce the Shatpati meter into Kannada in his Harishchandra Kavya which is considered a classic even though it occasionally violates strict rules of Kannada grammar. Prose was the medium chosen by the Virashaiva poets also known as Lingayat to write devotional poetry called Vachana Sahitya in the 12th century. They were led by such great saints as Basavana a minister in the court of southern Kalachari king Bayala II, Akka Mahadevi and Allama Prabhu. Over 200 Vachana poets have been recorded from this period, more than 30 of whom were woman poets. Vachanas are characterized as brief disconnected passages, each ending with one or more names of Shiva. The style was epigrammatical, parallelistic and elusive, dwelling on the vanity of riches and spiritual benefits of the worship of Shiva. These poems are still recited by Lingayat Acharyas priests. The poems have a section called Kalanyana with a messianic forecast of the future mentioning the arrival of the ideal king Veera Vasanta Raya who would rebuild Kalyani, the geographical center of the Lingayat movement and restore the Lingayat sect to its full glory. Other famous teachers were Sivalenka, Sripati Pandita, Malakarjuna Paditaradya. The five famous Acharyas were Ravana Siddha, Marula Siddha, Panditaradya, Ekorami Tandi and Visvesvaracharya. Well-known Vachana writers of the time were Chenabasava, Prabhudeva, Sadarama, Kandaguli Kasiraja etc. <laughs> Vaishnava literature Rudrabhada, a smarta Brahmin believer of monistic philosophy, was an early Brahminical writer whose patron was Chandramoli, a minister of Hoysala king Veera Balala II. Based on the earlier work of Vishnu Purana, he wrote Jagannatha Vijaya in the Shampu style relating the life of Krishna leading up to his fight with the demon Banasura. Famous among Brahmin writers from the 15th century was Kumara Vyasa. His real name was Naranapa and hailed from modern Gadag district in Karnataka. He wrote the first ten chapters of Gadagina Bharata 1430, a Kannada adaptation of epic Mahabharata in the court of Deva Raya II. The work was later completed by Thimana in the court of King Krishnadevaraya. Dedicating the work to his patron king, Thimana called it Krishnaraya Bharata. In the 15th century, Narahari wrote the earliest Brahmanical rendering of the epic Ramayana in Kannada called Torev Ramayana. It is called so because it was written in Torev, Sholapur district, modern Maharashtra. The Vaishnava Bhakti devotion influence on Kannada literature was acute from the time of Vijayanagara Empire, a direct impact of the Dvaita philosophy propounded by Madhvakarya of Udupi in the 13th century. Over 150 well known Bhakti saints who wrote thousands of compositions are known. These compositions are broadly classified as general compositions, kavya poetic compositions and tattva philosophical compositions. General compositions are further classified as kirtanas, yugabogas, saladas, vritanama, dandaka, tripadi, patati, sangathya and rigali. The period between the 14th century to 16th century produced the first wave of devotional literature called the Haridasa Sahitya literature. Vyasatirtha who composed songs in praise of Krishna, Parandara Dasa whose compositions marked his devotion to Parandara Vitala a form of Vishnu and Kanaka Dasa who praised Adikashava a form of Krishna in his poems were the great trinity of Vaishnava composers in Kannada. The contribution of Parandara Dasa to Carnatic music is immeasurable, and he is called the 
Karnataka Sangeeta Patamaha, father of Carnatic music. Historians propose the number of his compositions were as many as 75,000 to 475,000 songs in Kannada and Sanskrit language, though only few hundreds are available today. He codified and consolidated the school of Carnatic music by evolving several steps like Sarali, Jantai, Thatu Varasai, Alankara and Geetham and laid down a framework for imparting formal training in this art form. He became an inspiration to later day Carnatic composers, Saint Kanaka Dasa of Kaganali in modern Haveri district, who from various accounts belonged either to the community of shepherds or hunters or warriors Kshatriya is an example of a non-Brahmin composer who made significant contribution to the Bhakti devotion movement. Apart from his 200 compositions, he authored important works namely, Nalacharitar story of Nala and Haribhaktisara devotion to Krishna in a book of morals for children in Shatpati meter, and Rissimastava compositions in praise of Narasimha, an avatar of Vishnu, Ramadhaniacharit which narrates the superiority of the ragi millet over other grains in a book meant to address class inequalities and Mahanataranjini river of delight which is a poem in Kavya poetic style narration of stories of Krishna in Sangatya meter. Secular literature Kannada literary works treating algebra, arithmetic and geometry have been written by Rajaditya, Bhaskaracharya of Bijapur, Thimarasa and others. The 9th century mathematician Mahaviracharya, a native of Gulbarga, was patronized by the Rashtrakuta king Amogavarsha. The first commentaries on the theories in his Ganita Sarasangraha a Sanskrit work were later translated to Kannada. Rajaditya showed skill in reducing to easy verse the mathematical subjects Ganita in his writings called Vyavahara Ganita, Shetraganita and Lilavati. In the court of Hoysala Veera Balala III, Radha Kavi wrote Ratamala and Radhasutra bearing on the subjects of natural phenomena such as rain, lightning, earthquakes, planets and omens. The earliest available writing on astrology is Jatakatalaka by Sridharacharya 1049, a Jain who also authored a work on general science called Sastrakavita and was patronized by Western Chalukya king Someshvara I in the field of medicine. Jagadala Samanathas Karnataka Kalyanakara of 1150 prescribing a totally vegetarian and non-alcoholic diet, a translation of Pujyapada's Sanskrit Kalyanakarika is the earliest available and is in shampoo style. Gyanakusha also known as Gajaga or Narayana who wrote on erotics in the mid 10th century was a minister in the court of Rashtrakuta king Krishna III though his works have not come down to us Chandraraja 1025 who was patronized by Mashiraja a feudatory of western Chalukya Jayasimha II wrote the earliest available book on erotism called Madanakatalaka in shampoo meter in 18 chapters the writing dwells on the subject as a conversation between the author's patron and his wife. Govidya is the earliest available writing on veterinary science. It was authored by Prince Kurtavarma in 1100 in the court of his brother and the famous Western Chalukya king Vikramaditya VI. Nagavarma I, 980, a Brahmin scholar from Vengi in modern Andhra Pradesh who was patronized by Chavundaraya, a Western Ganga minister, wrote Chandambudi Ocean of Prosody addressed to his wife. This is considered the earliest available Kannada writing in prosody. He also wrote one of the earliest available romance classics called Karnataka Kadambari in sweet and flowing shampoo mixed verse and prose. It is based on an earlier romance work in Sanskrit by poet Bana and is popular among critics. The earliest known grammarian in Kannada is Nyasena but his works are considered extinct. Among existing literature, Nagavarma II's Karnataka Bhashabhushana is from 1145. Nagavarma II was the poet laureate in the court of western Chalukya king Jagadhikamala II. In this book, the sutras and short explanation are in Sanskrit and the illustrations are from Kannada literature. In 1260, Kasiraja wrote a comprehensive book on Kannada grammar called Sabdamanadarpana Mirror of Word Jewels. The rules here are set forth in Kanda meter and followed by a prose commentary by the author and is considered a writing of high value. Sisamayana introduced the earliest writings in the Sangatya meter in his works Anjaneshwarita and Tripura Dahana, the later being a poem on the destruction of the triple fortress of birth, decay, and death. The earliest known lexicon in Kannada is the Rana Kanda by the great poet Rana with each verse ending with Kavaratna. 
Rana was the poet laureate of Western Chalukya kings Tailapa II and Satishraya and was bestowed the royal attributes of golden rod, royal umbrella and an elephant by his patrons. The earliest books on cookery were written by Jayabandunandana, Mangarasa. A book on toxicology was written by Mangaraja I in 1360 called Kajindramani Darpana. Among fiction writers, Nemakandra who was patronized by Hoysala Veera Balala II wrote Lilavati in 1170. This story is a romance fiction based on an earlier work in 610 called Vasavadatta by Subandhu with the scene of action in Banavasi. A Kadamba prince and a princess dream of each other, meet after many delays and are finally wedded to live happily ever after. Dramas make their arrival into Kannada literature with Malavi Madhava by Karnaparya 1140 and Subhadraharana and Prabhadachandra by Kasiraja being the earliest dramas now considered extinct. Of the ones that are available, Maitravinda Govinda by Singararaya 1680 is a Kannada version of Sriharsha's Ratnavali. Writings of local history made their appearance after the fall of Vijayanagara Empire. Some well-known works of history are Majurajara Charitre, Chikadevarajavamsavali 17th century, Pavajaya by Lingana, the last book being an important source of information on the origin of Vijayanagara Empire, etc. Among biographies, Rajanripa Vijaya, Kantharavanarasaraha Vijaya, Chikadevaraja Vijaya 17th century, and Bichalaraya Charite etc., are well-known works. <laughs> Notes <laughs>